Well, John, you and Marty must be the only people alive from that team. Is that, well, when I say the team, I guess the track and field team of the 36 Olympics. Well, of course, I'm, I'm the only gold medal winner that's still alive from that team. Yes. In track and field. Yes. Now, there's, there's other members of the team that are still alive. Now, I made contact with Sam Francis, who, who, was, who, was, who was the weight man on the team, mm. and he's still alive. Mm. He made contact with me uh, through somebody here in New Jersey. Mm. Now, he's out in Springfield, Il Illinois. Right. In fact, I have his address and telephone number. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But he's still alive. Now, as far as the others, I don't know. Yeah. Because they've been dying off, you know, like flies, you see. Yeah. And of course, all of us were up in the, up in the, up, up in our late seventies, or or in our middle, or in our or eighties, you see. Well, it was 1936. Right. That's 50. So you, that's 63 years ago. That's right. I figure if you were 17 at the minimum, that's that right. puts you at 80. See, I was 20. I was 20 when I made the team. And of course, I was 21 when I won my won my uh, event in Berlin. And that was your first Olympics. That's right. And it was uh, your first really year of collegiate competition. Right. right. Were you shocked by it all that you were having so much success and well, you know, so quickly? It, it, it came so fast. I didn't realize the honor that I had won until after the games were over, you know, because everything happened so fast for me, you know. Because normally, you know, people who make the Olympic team and win the Olympics, they've been training for over a period of time. Well, that's what I mean. You did it so yeah, fast, fast compared See, to everyone else. Only three years. Two years in high school, one year in college, and I won the Olympics. Now tell me about your high school career. How did you know you were so, the track was going to be your road to stardom? Well, uh, <laughs> I did not know that. You see, when I see the first two years of high school that I attended, uh, they didn't have an athletic program. That was my freshman and sophomore year. What high school was that? Connellsville High School in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Okay. And then I had to transfer from that school because they it was only a two-year high school to the, to the school to the city school in the city of Connellsville, and that. And uh, I went into my junior year, see. Mm -hmm. So I went out for football. And of course, the coach used to have us have the football players, you know what they do, have them running wind switch up and down sure. the field. Sure. And there was a quarterback on the team that was the top, top sprinter of the school. And the line coach, the line coach of that football team was a track coach of the school. Right. And he saw I was able to keep up with that sprinter, you see. And uh, uh, he invited me out to track. Right However, there on the spot? Did yeah. he see it and say, yeah. come here, son, I'd like yeah. to talk to you? That's right. But yeah. nevertheless, I had to quit the football practice. In fact, I quit the week before the first game mm. because my mother made me quit because I was getting home too late from, the, from my football practice mm -hmm. to take care of my chores around the house. Mm -hmm. So, but then that, the track coach told me he didn't want me to go, back for, go, go out for football anymore, see, because he was afraid I might get hurt. Yeah, I've heard that from yeah. the other athletes who... Yeah. Um, so uh, I didn't go out, and I concentrated on my track. Well, the first, at junior, I did fairly well. Just, just the, the races were just fair. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I broke that, the mile record. I made the mile. I broke five minutes in the mile, and I ran, and I, and I ran about uh, two, three and a half a mile, something like that. You call that fair? Fair, it was fair as far as I was concerned. And um, then the, my senior year, I just came <laughs> into my own. I came into my own. What do you think God did it? Was it just your, you think, just natural maturation? That's and right. I'm something, it just, I, Amazing. My, 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 my times changed. Yeah. I ran them out. I remember now, I, ran, ran, I just broke five minutes them out in my junior year. Yeah. And my senior year, I ran 4.23.4. Oh my goodness. And I ran a half a mile and 155.1. And I ran a quarter and, and, and uh, just about 48 seconds. 
in 46, my senior year. 46 was world class, right? Okay. Well, the schoolboy Mao, that year, I ran 4.23.4. Four I, I ran the second fastest schoolboy mile in the country. Al Zamperini from California, he ran four, mm -hmm. he ran 4.21. Mm -hmm. But you see, I would have probably run faster because the man who came in second, I mean, I beat him, I beat him by almost, a, almost 100, 100 yards. I had wow. nobody to push me, see? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. This, so this is your senior year? Senior in high school. Now, had you already started competing against U.S. Peacock? Cause oh, no. I, see, I never I thought you. I thought you said high school. This, well, th these, were high, these were high school times I'm giving you now. Understood. Yeah. Then when I went to Pitt. I see. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. My freshman year, well, in my, fresh, in my freshman year, I, I, was, I was running co close to 47-something in, 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 in the quarter. And I was, I, was, I was running around one, 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 fifty, one fifty, one fifty three something and a half. And my, of course, my best time, I ran four twelve eight in the mile. Wow. Those were the times. Wow. You must have surprised yourself as yeah. much. What well, about your I, coach? I, what, was your coach just shaking his or her, no, I guess, the, his the, head? And he, the coach, he, he, his name was Carl Olson. He was a Swede, and he, he was very much surprised as to how I came along so fast. See, yeah. That's why, that's why I say that I was a gifted athlete. I see. I had to be. Right. To do what I did. Right. So it wasn't necessarily the coaching that turned you from a okay athlete to a star. It was. That's right. You were just blossoming at the right that's time. Right. And, and I beat. See, and everybody that was on that team that was, that was ahead of me in class in sophomores, I beat them all. Wow. Yeah, I beat them all. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide to go to Pitt? Well, there was a, there was there was a uh, a, di uh, a doctor of dentistry who was a graduate of Pitt, and of course, and then there was a, a couple of a couple of business people in my hometown who were graduates of Pitt, uh -huh. and they encouraged me to go to Pitt. Yeah. Black, white, white. Uh huh. Yeah. And of course, it's Dr. Dennisy. Uh, his name, what do you call it? His nickname is Muzz Campbell. He thought the sun rose and shined on Pitt. That's great. Yeah. And he found you. And, yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, so, was he a mentor of sorts? What? Of me? Yes. No. no. What? Did yes. you have someone you would call a mentor, either athletically or just, uh, you know, in your life? Was it your dad or was it someone no, else? No. 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 I think my high school coach was the one that really encouraged me. Of course, see, my parents, they didn't know anything about, they didn't know anything about athletics. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, who, what was his my name? My high school coach, when I was doing so, so well with my, with, with my track activities. Yes. Of course, he told me I had a chance to go to college if, you know, if I continued my progress you know, in my athletics. So, uh, nobody in my family ever went to college. Uh -huh. And this was my opportunity, and so I, I said I was going to take advantage of it, and that's what happened. What was your coach's name in high school? Carl, high school, on um, Joseph Larue. Joseph Larue uh -huh. was my high school coach, and and uh, my my college coach was Carl Olson. He was a Swede. It was your high school coach you though consider your mentor oh, that yeah. uh, kind yeah, of spurred you on. Advised me. Mm -hmm. What to do? Did he teach you a lot about um, running those heats, or do you consider more he helped you train so that your natural ability? Yes, I would say the latter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, John, tell me when you first tell me when you first realized you might be in the Olympics, that you even had a chance at it. Well, let yeah. me tell you something. When I completed my freshman year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That summer, I had planned on going home and taking it easy. Do you want to stop for a minute? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stop? Coming. Okay. Um, it was the summer, and you were going to take it easy that summer. Yes, I had planned on going home and just t taking it easy and, uh, and just relaxing. 
so my, my coach came to me and said, uh, John, I want you to try for the Olympic team. I didn't think anything about the Olympics. I didn't even know the Olympic trials were going on because I, I, I had no particular interest. Right. Had you followed the Olympics before? No, no. no. So no. really just they were a name out there, but that, that you had no connection. In fact, I don't, I don't think I even, even recall anybody even discussing the Olympics with me that particular time. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll try out for them. And that's what I did. So they had a track meet in Pittsburgh, which was, uh, was the preliminaries as far as qualifying for the Olympic team. So I ran the quarter at that particular time, and I ran, I think, 48-something. 48, 48 and then that was the preliminaries. Then we had to go up to Harvard Stadium up in Boston, mm -hmm. and I ran, ran the half a mile up there. And, of course, I, I took first place in the half a mile. That mm -hmm. was the semifinals. What made you... How did you determine that you were a better quarter miler versus half mile, half miler? Well, uh, did you already know at that point at yeah. Harvard? Uh, well, the coach, you know, because I ran a, a very good half a mile during my freshman year mm -hmm. in Pitt, you see. Mm -hmm. And the coach knew that I was a good half a mile, and he also knew that I was a good quarter mile, yeah. you see. Yeah. So uh, he, he concentrated, had me concentrate on a half a mile. Mm -hmm. And then after, uh, after the semifinal trials at Harvard Stadium, then we came back to Randall's Island at the White City Stadium there in New York. Yes. And uh, I qualified. I ran, I ran the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, semifinal race, and then I ran the final race, you see. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I won. Did that surprise you? At that time, yeah. well, you see, you now in that race, there was a very outstanding half a mile from California, and I had heard about this fellow. His name was Ben Eastman. I think he, I think he went to uh, Stanford. Uh -huh. I think he went to Stanford, and he was. He had he had a nickname as well, Blazing Ben Eastman. Huh. Well, of course, you know, it, it didn't it didn't it didn't bother me. You see, because. I was only interested in trying to win. Right. So, and it was very, very hot in the final tryouts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the heat affected Ben or not, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, I was able to defeat him. See. And he was really the only competition? He, he was, was, he was the only competition in that, in that half a mile, that final half a mile. Mm -hmm. And he didn't make the team. Wow. Well, uh, you had met... Um, you was Peacock prior to that, I assume, prior to the, because yes, he yes. was already, tell me of how you first met him and how you developed your friendship. Well, I met him first, you know, when his school came back. I mean, I met him first in, in, when uh, I was a high school senior, see, mm. and at the indoor meet in West Virginia. Mm. And then uh, when I went to college, so you just met him because he was competing there? Yeah, his school was competing against my school. Right. As a dual meet, you see. Temple was competing against Pitt. And I got to know him very well then. And then our friend, friendship just blossomed from that mm. point. Did you know uh, Jesse Owens at that time, or was yes, that later? I met. Well, I got to know Jesse. Uh, uh, in fact, I met Jesse at the same time that I met Ewells at the field house in West Virginia. Wow. And then... Then I didn't, I didn't be, uh, become uh, um, more acquainted with Jesse mm -hmm. until the Olympics, until we're trying out for the Olympics. So that was uh, like uh, the best high schoolers in the East? Yeah. And the three of you met for the first time there? Right. Mm -hmm. um, were you... Well, no, Jesse, see, Jesse and Peacock were, were college kids in. I was a high... Oh, by that time, that's yeah. right, you were one year behind them. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, they, were, they were college. They yes. were college. Um, wow, that's even more impressive mm -hmm. that you were running against all the college kids. No, I well, I, well, I was running it. I guess they had the, the, the meet, meet that I competed I in was just high school I see, see. not college. That didn't get any right. collegiate athletes. Touching on a little different angle here, were you aware of any prejudice against you as a black athlete at that time, either at that West Virginia meet or no, any no, other one? So no. it really wasn't present in no. the sports arena. No. Did you meet Marty Glickman 
prior to the Olympics? No, I didn't meet Marty Glickman until the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know he was at Randall's Island, so yeah. maybe you know he was he, in he the was, crowd. Because he was a sprinter, you know, and whatnot. And I didn't know him. I didn't know Sam Stoller either. You see. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me but, how your. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You were going to say. Ahead. How your friendship blossomed with yours. You met at that time, and then. Uh, well, that time, and then uh, of course when I came back from the games. Uh, our friendship has continued, you know, mm -hmm. and I've gone to his home many times, mm -hmm. and of course he's visited with me mm -hmm. um, many times, and I got to know his wife very well, Betty Peacock, and I got to know his children, mm -hmm. and uh, I, of course, recommended him for the, for the National Track and Field Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was just very, I was very, just very fond of him. So mm -hmm. Very fond of him. I was sorry, the way he he had to uh, mm -hmm. die. You see. I read his uh, that obituary. Mm -hmm. I guess Alzheimer's is uh, not it was a, a pretty terrible disease. You know, terrible disease. Mm -hmm. I hope they get a handle on that mm -hmm. because it's it's destroyed so many people. Mm -hmm. And it touches all the families so much. Oh yes, and it's harder on the family. Yeah. Than it, uh, than the victim itself, you know, because the victim makes it so difficult for the family. Yeah. So difficult for. Them. Without even knowing. That's yeah. right. Uh huh. That's right. Well, um, one of the areas that again I'm probing here is the relationship between blacks and Jews and. Where, how much they were aware of the boycott and each other at those times. My sense is not very much that everyone was just trying as best they could to, you know, do the best they could that in their true. own life, and it wasn't that is true. really until well, later. See, I didn't see, see. We didn't run into anything like that, you know. Of course, we were we were pretty much up and up and we were pretty much alarmed as to why Marty and uh, and. Uh, Sam didn't get a chance to run. Now they were extra extra runners for the relay team, mm -hmm. and uh, they had qualified to run. You see, mm -hmm. as the extras. But I I still maintain that Dean Cromwell, who was who was the head coach of USC, was instrumental in Jesse and Sam not running, because he he's he made, he you mean made Marty sure. and Marty and Sam. Marty and yeah. Sam so yeah. because. Wyckoff and uh, Draper. Draper was his men. Yes. Was was Dean Cromwell's men. Yes. And they both were on that relay. Yes. Yeah. But they were scheduled to be on it with Glickman and Stoller. So he could have kept his men and kept the two Jewish boys. That's right. So some people think that he was really anti Semitic on some level mm -hmm. and was acting on that. I, it's theory. Yeah, that's right. You, do you think that played a part, knowing, having seen him, and do you have any sense of the man? Or no, I didn't. Yeah. No, I didn't. He was just, he was, as far as I'm concerned, he was, he was one of, just one of the coaches. Because, yeah. you know, we had Larson Robinson from the University of Pennsylvania, who was the head coach. Yes. Then we had uh, Dean Cromwell, who, which we were talking about, was a coach of, uh, of uh, USC. Yeah. Then we had Brutus Hamilton, who was the coach of the University of California. Mm. Then we had uh, Hayes, who was a coach of, of Indiana University. Mm. Those were the coaches. Mm. Of all of track and field. Right. Those right. were the coaches. Not just the running, but all of all, track and field. All track and field. Right. I think you see now, uh, Hayes from the University of Indiana, I think he was, he was more or less especially in, in, in long distance runners. You see. I see. Mm. Uh -huh. Because he had such runners as Don Lash and and uh, those, those fellows, uh -huh. and of course Brutus Hamilton. Of course, he he was Archie Williams' coach, who won the 400 meters. You see. Uh huh. So, who was your coach? Who? Carl, Carl Olson. No, I mean, who did you consider your coach there at the Olympics? Was it um, uh, Lawson Robertson and Cromwell? Or was it the well, more not, See, none of, none of the coaches during, during the Olympic Games ever gave me any kind of advice at all. None, that includes my own coach. I got no advice. 
I got no no advice at all when I ran the preliminaries, mm. or the semifinals, mm. or the finals. Did you expect it, or was it? Well, uh, I, well, I would pr I'd probably welcome it because yeah. you know I was so green, yeah, yeah. And so inexperienced. Why do you think that was? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Huh. That, that, that does seem strange. No, no, no like the, uh, the, the preliminaries and the semifinals, I got right out in front. And I stayed out in front. That's how I won those two races. Right. Now the finals, I, 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 I did all this on my own. I figured, well, I would not get out in front on the final race. I'd try to run second to the man who was, who was leading the race, which right. at that time was Phil Edwards from Canada. And of course, Phil set a very set at such a very slow pace, extremely slow pace, huh. that huh. I got boxed in. Uh -huh. I got boxed in. Right. Now, the only way that I could get out of the box, I had to stop. Yeah. I stopped. Oh, literally stopped. I literally stopped. And of course, I got spiked in doing so, because I found out that I, that I had a spike, a wound on, on my knee when the race was over. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And. I ran out in the third, ran out in the third lane, and I ran around the field. I let them proceed, and I ran around. And just before I got to got to the to the last turn, uh, Phil Edwards uh, passed me, and then I passed him, and then I came on in and, and won the race. He didn't have the kick at the end to do it no, again. No. Wow. So I came in, and of course it was a slow race. It was. 152.9, but it would have been, of course, if I had gone out in front, if I had gone out in front and taken the pace right from the start, I probably would have set a new world record or new, at least a new Olympic record. But nevertheless, I, I was happy to win the race. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I ran more than eight. I ran more than 800 meters because I was running it out in third lane. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there was no coach to tell you before the finals. Uh, what strategy? Hey, John, mm -hmm. do this. You're doing great. No, nothing. Huh? Nothing. Huh. I, I didn't receive any 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 advice at all. Did any of the uh, runners, or was it more or less everyone on their own? That everyone seems... was on their own. That's why I know. Well, why were I they? Was on my own. What were the coaches doing? <laughs> well, I think they were just sitting yeah. sitting in the bleach like. That. John, there have been claims that. Those coaches, uh, Robertson and um, uh, I'm sorry, the Cromwell, Cromwell, like yeah. Brundage, were Nazi sympathizers uh -huh. and sort of willing to go along with Nazi wishes. Well, I think, think Brund Brund Brundage, I understand, was definitely a Nazi sympathizer. Mm -hmm. sympathizer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Did you know that at the time, or no? Was that we heard after? about that later. Yeah. Later. later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you were, were you aware of anything like that at the time in the other coaches, or? No, 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 no. I guess you wouldn't have been privy to it, no, I guess. No, no. Mm -hmm. um, when, in the obituary article about Ulysses, uh, he said about his, the disappointment, or presumed disappointment, of pulling lane just before the final. Yeah. Visit. That he handled it well. That's the way it is in life, and mm -hmm. so forth. Do you think yeah, Ben Johnson did the same thing? You know, Ben Johnson, the great sprinter from Columbia. Yes. Uh, he probably would have made the team too, mm. but he pulled a muscle. Yeah, a similar time. Huh? Mm -hmm. Did you know anything about the boycott? As uh, it about was the boycotting the Olympics? Yes, the, no, the movement no. prior. And no, I did not know that. I guess you were so young, you really, mm -hmm. that was all going even before you were uh, aware of the Olympics, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, tell me a little bit about the boat ride over and about what the various, what you and the other, your teammates did and well, what it was the boat like. ride was kind of rough for some, for some, some of them who were not very good sailors. You know. <laughs> um, some of them got sick. Quite a number of them got sick. Uh -huh. And some of the athletes I didn't see until after we landed in Hamburg, you know, because they were sick. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I never forget uh, uh, Fritz Pollard Jr., he got sick uh, uh, on his way over. Uh, but I, I, fortunately for me, I did get sick, so I was, I was pretty good sailor, you see. <laughs> and of course, you know, Atlantic is where it can, it can be very rough. Oh, terrible. Yeah. 
can be very rough. Yes, and of course, the boat, you know, wasn't that large. Wasn't all like those large luxury liners like we have today. Yeah, see. yeah. Uh, Did it feel luxurious to you? Or uh, was it your first trip over? Uh, my first trip. First trip. It must have been yeah. amazingly exciting. Yeah. And I was able to enjoy the food. Great. Everyone else is turning green, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, this is so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you can see sick. You don't want to part the food. You don't even want to smell it. That's right. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Uh, what was Owens like on the trip? Was he in a good mood and funny? Well, or uh, did I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have too much, uh, I didn't uh, associate too much with Jesse on the way over. Uh -huh. So we were, all, we, were all, we were all paired up. Well, Jesse was paired up with uh, Dave Albritton. They were, of course, from the same school. Yes, you know? yes. And I was paired up with Mac Robinson, uh -huh. Jackie Robinson's brother. Yes. Uh, and, uh, so you really stayed uh, in your pair right, uh -huh. a lot. Uh -huh. What about coming back? What were the circumstances? Well, coming back, you see, uh, of course, I didn't come back. We, uh, uh, we didn't come back with Jesse. See, Jesse had received some offers uh, from professional offers because he was booked to run at a number of places mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the... Uh, he turned those he turned those offers down, and of course the AAU, of course, uh, immediately uh, 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 turned against him, and because they made him professional then. See? Yes. And uh, he, Jesse came back on the Queen Mary. Uh, before we before we came back, because I ran up in up in Oslo, Norway, with with, 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 well, with some members of the team. Uh huh. And there was a at the stadium in. England, where there was a yeah, big race thing. afterwards. Well, we all we all ran there after the games, after the Olympic games. Right after well, that was the yeah, first stop. Yeah, yeah, at the at the White City Stadium in London. Uh huh. And then uh, I think uh, then they had a track meet at Dresden, Germany. Uh -huh. And of course, I didn't participate. Mm -hmm. I didn't run. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ralph ran against Jesse at that particular meet, and Ralph beat Jesse. Mm -hmm. In the hundred? In the hundred, yeah. Wow. Oh. Right in Dresden, Germany. Huh. And then, of course, that was that was, that was Jesse's last race mm. when, before he returned to America. And he didn't run professionally. I mean, in high competition after that, did he? No. I know he did. Uh, and he gets awards. And yeah, yeah, more of the showman. That's right. Side of things. Of course, he was trying to make trying to make some money, you know. Yeah. Were you aware of uh, the, contro of the controversy around his not running and his well, choices I, I and heard, all the I offers? That, I heard that uh, uh, um, Dan Ferris, he was the secretary of the National AAU. He, got, he, he was very much upset of Jeff, of, uh, by Jesse not running because they had con these various countries had made contract with the AAU for, for Jesse to run. So. Right. But, right. Uh, right. But you know he turned he turned it down because yeah. it was these so-called offers that that I I don't think they materialize for the most part. You weren't close enough to him to know any of the particulars. No, of that? no, uh -huh. no. But you heard about it through. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, back to Ulysses after we, after you got back, did he? I understand he, you of course were competing for the next three years, so yeah, you were busy in your career. Um, did you, how did you and Euless continue your contact afterwards? Well, uh, different track meets we attended, you know. Okay, so it was through yeah, different the track, track contacts. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, were you aware of what was happening in Germany? Afterwards, after the games, yeah, as uh, you know, they tightened the noose on Jews and others in there in Germany. Was that commonly known? No, it was. See, see, when we went over there, I think Hitler must have cleared the moratorium, and all the stuff that he was was doing and persecuting Jews before. I think he he stopped it, you know. Yeah. Because he wanted to let, let the world know that he was it was very friendly, as far as far as the program was concerned. Uh -huh. But then, of course, I'm sure right after the games, uh, he went back to his old to his, to his mm -hmm. old program, mm -hmm. start initiating the same program 
that he was initiating prior to the mm -hmm. So no, it was not evident at all? No. Mm -hmm. uh, how about prejudice here for you when you got, as you uh, started to leave college, were you very aware of it or not as aware back, as others? Back when I came back, mm -hmm. well, one of the things I ran, ran into a bit of prejudice it was when I came back to the university because I, I was one month late getting back to school. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, the, the English professor did not want to let me in in, in, my, in the English department, in the, uh, take my English course. And of course, uh, a chancellor, I think, Chancellor Bowman, was the chancellor mm. of the school at the time, I think he was the one that sort of straightened that thing out. Mm. Because here I'd come back and then won the Olympics, no one Olympic champion in the history of the school, oh. and they, 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 they didn't want to let me, let me in the English class, you see. This one professor or? Yeah, you know, I guess that was head of the, I guess he was head of the English department. So right, yeah. so he had back control. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in your life in general, uh, it was not a big factor. That is, you weren't den uh, denied things. Well, obviously, or well, there was one. There was one incident when I went downtown uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, and I went into Chow's restaurant. There was a restaurant called Chow's, mm -hmm. and they refused to serve me. Mm -hmm. Was that the first time you had encountered that directly? That's right. Mm -hmm. Must have surprised you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. They refused. They refused to serve me. So, in the ranks of sports, you never saw blatant prejudice, or uh, uh, well, blatant prejudice. Is that no, correct? Not, or? Not, I, that was only oh, that was really only the one instance mm -hmm. that I ran into. Because mm -hmm. there, uh, it was written that uh, when Owens went out to, I think. Uh, the West Coast. Yeah. That he that's had to. Sit, that's where he set two or three Vernon Wells records. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think at that event he had to room in uh, the special dorm, I guess segregated dorm, rather than with everyone else. Well, in, 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 well maybe here's, not. I'll take it back. Here's in, in 1937, Pitt, Pitt had a, a dual meet at Annapolis, Navy. Navy uh, the Navy, see? Yes. And I could not participate. I had to stay home because they refused to, uh, they informed Pitt that I, I couldn't come and run against the, against the Navy, Navy athletes, you see. How did they tell you that? How did you find all this out? From the, from the coach. Your coach? My coach. He came to you and said, uh, John, I have to tell you something, and then? Yeah, and he told me the story, see? Was he apologetic, or? Well, I guess in some, uh, I guess he was, if I recall. Uh -huh. If I recall. Uh -huh. Then there was another incident and, uh, that same year. We had uh, uh, we had uh, a dual meet. We had a meet at Butler University in Indiana. Uh huh. In Indianapolis, Indiana, and I I couldn't stay in the hotel with late at They put, they put me up in the Black YMCA. They took you and any of your teammates? Did you have black teammates or just you? I was the only one. Whoa, so they took you out to another place. And I had to stay in the black one, see. Then... Um, Wait a minute, not so fast. <laughs> did you, because that was common in places, did you say, well, this is the way it is, or did, were you outraged? Or no, I was is this outraged. All it was, I just felt that that was, the, that was the, the environment and the way things were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said there was another time you were starting to say. That, and uh, of course, you see, that is, then uh, in, in 1937, when I ran in the Pan American Games in Dallas, Texas, uh -huh. uh, I couldn't, I couldn't stay. Well, there was a number of blacks at that particular time, uh -huh. and we couldn't stay in the hotel in Dallas. Uh -huh. They set up cots at the Black YMCA on the gym floor, and that's that's how, that's where we slept until the Olympic Games were over. Now, until the Olympic Games, I mean, until the until that race, until uh, the race was over, not the Olympic Games. Right. Uh, and uh, I won that race, and I set a new world's record. 
on Rand 147A. Wow. That was 1937. Wow. It came out. It came out in the in the Dallas papers the next day that they said they were quite sure that the Woodrow's record that Woodruff had set would be accepted because the track had been measured within one thousandth of an inch by the chief engineer of Southern Methodist University. All right, that was fine. I was very happy about that. So mm, I, they said they would accept the record. Yeah, they said it would, okay. the record would be accepted. Okay. So I left Dallas and I went on, went to California because I was part of the Olympic team to tour Japan at that summer. Uh huh. It came out in the papers. I guess about two or three days after after my race at Dallas. That and they indicated in the paper that the race that Woodruff had set at the Dallas at the Cotton Bowl would not be accepted because they found the track to be six feet short. So you know what that was just out and out prejudice. See, they did six feet. Yeah, before it was measured within one thousand of an inch. Did you try to I call counter. I wrote Dan Ferris a letter, the secretary of the NEU. And I said it was a shame that they took that world record from away me. from me, see. I said I never never ran to make, make, make world records. If I just only time I, I ran, I only ran to win, you see. Yes. The record the record uh, the record was broke, well but it was fine. And this was the time that I ran one of the finest races and the best race of my of my life, my career. And they took the took it away from me. So uh, but he never he never he never responded to the letter that I wrote him. No one did, ever? No. So when you left, they said, we verified that this is a correct record. So you left town with some kind of official, not in writing, but at least a, uh, the officials that said, the record's yours. Right. Later, they, they it was gone. Gone. They found the track from 1,000 an inch to six feet short. And they just reported it that way. They didn't, right. There was no news no, article that said, no, we've no, gone no. back and measured. It was just, oh, we found it. Mm -hmm. So that was just out and out prejudice. They Stole just, your record. They got, they got, they got the heads again and said they were not going to give that black man that record. And so that was what it amounted to. Well, you said just a few minutes ago you hadn't uh, experienced that much. I think that's a yeah, big, yeah. big, big, well, big. I had to recall, you know. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your your relationship to Jews and your attitude about Jews in that time. Did you have certain prejudices or not? Or about Jews? Yeah. Was no. there? Uh, what? Well, tell me what you felt at that time. Were you? Did you go to school with any Jews, or was it? Yes, I, I went to school with Jews in my high school, okay. high school, and I went to school with Jews at, at University of Pittsburgh, uh -huh. but I, that, that, something racial, that, that didn't mean anything to me. Gotcha. Didn't mean anything to me at all. And see, and I grew up in a neighborhood back in my hometown uh, with Jews, uh, some Germans, a little bit of everything, and see, and I grew up with nothing. I grew up with nothing with white kids. You see, yes. All my playmates from from elementary grade right on through, right on through high school, uh, were, were white kids. Predominantly. Like Predominantly white, because my, my it was only two black families in the neighborhood where I when, ah. where I was born. My family and another family. Ah, so Everybody you grew was, up being the almost the only. That's right. Black person in the that's community. Right. Of course, when I had yeah, when I had a fight. If they call me nigger, we fought. Next day we're friendly again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like kids are. Uh huh. Yeah. But not today. Today, they, they, you get in a fight, they want to kill you. Well, you hear, hear, back in those days, we got in a fight. You may have got a black eye, maybe a bloody nose, but that was it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And things got dealt with on that level rather than right. in this crazy way. Um, Eulis had a very interesting connection to Jewish Judaism mm -hmm. in that his kids were partly Jewish, though his adopted kids. Oh, I see. Uh, did you know that? I, I didn't know that. I found out from his daughter that they had... Um, well, see, uh, see Bet Betty adopted those kids. They were very, they were very gifted kids, you know, very, very bright. Uh, what were the BB? circumstances? Huh? 
what were the so how, do you know the circumstances about how they found their kids? And no, but you was, you told me they had adopted. See, mm -hmm. Betty had a tubular pregnancy. I see, and she almost died. Ooh. So you know, so therefore that that she could she could not become pregnant anymore. Right. And then they they decided they would adopt some children. Right. And of course they they adopted Linda and BB. And raised them partially Jewish, as I understand. Uh, sent them to Jewish camp, and they uh, Linda claims she had a lot. She went to synagogue with her friends mm -hmm. and the community she was. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, as were you aware? Were you aware of the event called Kristallnacht, which happened in Germany? It was like a a riot where mostly Jewish businesses were attacked and synagogues were burned. Well, I heard so I, I heard about it and I read about it. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. In 38, I was just wondering if it reached, how far out it reached people's consciousness mm -hmm. that that had happened. So soon after, like the day after or soon after, you read about it in yes. the newspapers? Yes, I read about it in the newspapers. Was, so it was popularly known that things had turned violent in Germany by that time? Well, I think, sorry, I guess soon after the games This over, is 1938, yeah, November yeah. of 38, yeah. when, when this yeah. event happened, That's right. which is two years after the, after the game, games. Just but, so am I uh, kind of wondering, was that the first time that many people in the United States said, oh my God, this is actually turning violent, or whether there were other well, I think the even based on the based on the news, newspaper reports, I guess that's when that, that's when the people uh, realized what was what actually happening. And of course, you know, in the 1939 is when Hitler started the war, when he marched yeah. when he marched on Czechoslovakia. Yeah, and that started World War Two. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, did you were you in the service, John? Yes, but well, I, I didn't serve in in the European theater. I served in in, in uh, in the Pacific, Pacific, mm. Pacific area. Mm. You said that you was was such a kind and uh, I think I think you said cultured man also. Wonderful. He was just a, you was just had a wonderful personality and a very kind and gentle man. You mm. see, mm. very likable, mm -hmm. very sincere. Mm. You'd do anything for you. Hmm. If you were his friend, and he had a wide circle of friends, and oh yeah, so forth. They, they respected him. Yeah. They really love you. I know he was also active in uh, as a uh, referee in Madison Square Garden for many, many years. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, and, he, and of course, he officiated a great, a great number of years at the pin relays. Mm -hmm. So did I. I oh yeah. Yeah. Till when? Moment. Well, um, I've been going down every year. I, di I didn't make it last year because of my, my mm -hmm. illness. Mm -hmm. See, I, was, I was sick and I couldn't make mm -hmm. it. But I, I, I officiated, oh, I guess, about 27 or 28 years. Consecutive years? Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, but you saw some great athletes go through that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, just a few more minutes and then I think uh, are there any in particular memories of Euless in those years that either really funny or unusual incidents that you recall? I'm talking about up until 1938, or big besides the big disappointment of his. Were there any uh, other tough times in his life that you were aware of? No, no. I know he, he met Betty around that time. Yeah. He was a great love affair and yeah. great marriage. Um, what about the competition between Jesse and Eulis? You were at that Lincoln match, or meet the, uh, I guess, AAU championship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Eulis beat uh, Jesse at that, there. And I know that that was uh, happening regularly at that point. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I read one book where that described that Jesse was going through a hard time at that time, deciding whether to marry uh, his wife I, or not, and there was some term, personal turmoil that yes, well, people think maybe Jesse, was... Jesse, Jesse had his problem, just like when he came back from Lincoln, because he'd, he'd, got, he'd gotten friendly with a very fine girl out there on the West Coast. And of course, Ruth got a hold of it. You see. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, and of course, he Jesse had, had a child by Ruth you know, out of wedlock. Yes. Yes. And uh, she. So they weren't married at first. They weren't married, but, but he, she laid the law down to him. I heard it was her dad and her both, like the family uh, mm -hmm. had a. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the the. Uh, the father of this girl that he was had befriended out on the coast. Mm. Well, they thought they thought. Well, they, 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 oh. yeah, it is here. I think they, I think they thought about just was going to marry marry that girl. Marry uh -huh. her, you know. Uh huh. But. Uh, Ruth took care of that situation. Right. <laughs> this is my guy. <laughs> uh. Yeah, she took care of that. Do you remember what you and Jesse were like at that at that meet in Lincoln? Was it kind of normal times, or did oh, he yeah, seem yeah. distracted, or not really, huh? The the sports well, was just, the thing. Jesse had a lot of pressure on him at that particular time. Yeah, a lot of pressure because of. Of, uh, of, of, of uh, the communication that he received from Ruth. That happened just before the race. Oh yeah, that happened. That that that, that happened before the race. Yes, yeah. definitely. Got it. So he had that on his mind. Oh yeah. While this was going all going on. Hmm. If you had to compare the two, Eulis and Jesse, could you say that one was really faster or better than the other? Or well, uh, I'm only going by Ulysses' record, you know. He, as I said, he mm -hmm. he beat Jesse seven times out of every ten they ran. Mm -hmm. Ran the hundred. Mm -hmm. So, uh, record speaks for itself. There you go. <laughs> uh, any other recollections about the at the Olympics themselves? That uh, uh, unusual things that you remember about either the Nazis or. Germany, or is it? Uh, no, nothing at all. It's just an amazing event to be at and exciting. Right. So. Great. Okay, John. Well, I can't thank you enough for this. What I'm going to do is uh, make a copy of it and send it to you. Mm -hmm. I assume you have a.